course, for the Jenkins Project. It's the 1st of June, uh, 2021 at 7.30 a.m. India Standard Time. Uh, delighted to be here and remind everyone that we are we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct as we interact with each other. So what I've got for an agenda today looks like generating the change log was the top item and then reviewing the plugin installation manager tool documentation from Sudakar. So those were the two topics that were on my list. Uh, Dheeraj, is there anything that you would like to add to the agenda? No, no, nothing. I think this is fine for today. Great. Okay, then, then let's get started. And the goal here was actually to have you generate the change log. Do you want to share your screen, Diaj, and take us through the change log generation process so that I can watch over your shoulder and? Sure, I would really love that. All right. Okay, I'll share my screen right now. Can you see my screen? I can, yes. Awesome. So I went ahead and uh, run this command, which is to capture all the PRs that have been submitted on Jenkins with the help of this uh, core changelog generator. And uh, it found all the PRs and wrote. Okay, pause, pause. There's already some output there that uh, I assume you're okay if I interrupt you. Yes, definitely, please do. Okay, so for, for some reason it's saying, checking range from Jenkins-2.293, and that is too wide of a range. So that it should say, so, so checking range from Jenkins-2.295. So mm. in your repository, in the Jenkins repository, could you do a git pull? Oh, right, right. right I'll I'm that. just not sure why it didn't get the tag for for two to, oh, interesting. So could you get pull minus minus tags? Okay, so do a get log space minus minus annotate. Yeah, I think that, oh no, um, sorry. I have to look up my command, just a minute. I have a short shortcut for it that and I okay, the command is git log minus minus graph minus minus decorate. Yeah, okay, there we go. All right, so here is head, yeah. So, oh, okay, let's do, let's do even, even simpler, quit from that and add one more argument. Mm -hmm. Space minus minus pretty, P-R-E-T-T-Y, mm -hmm. equals one line, O-N-E-L-I-N-E. Perfect. Okay. okay, so it shows. Now I got to do the same thing on mine to see if I see the same thing that you see. Mm -hmm. okay, you're on the master bench. That's correct. Okay, so 457, Maven release. For some reason, you don't have the. T okay. So could you do a git remote minus V? Let's see what your remote is. Okay. Ah, okay, there it is. It's All right, good. Remote. Now I understand. So we need, we need you to mm -hmm. also add the upstream repository so that you get the tags. Okay, good. So git remote add upstream. Mm -hmm space https colon slash slash github.com mm -hmm. slash jenkins ci mm -hmm. slash jenkins dot git 
and enter. Okay. Now, if you do a git space pull space minus minus all. And what that says is please pull from all of the remotes that I have listed and it will now pull in the additional tags. There we go. Okay, good. Yeah. Very good. Right. Now I'll but, do that same command, right? Right. Now you, now you want to run that command because now it will tell us. Right. Yes, this there one. we go. The core change log generator. Correct. And this would have worked just fine as well if you had initially cloned the the Jenk, the upstream repository instead of your fork. But because you your first clone was of your fork, it mm -hmm. only brought in the tags that existed at the time that you created the fork. Oh. So tags don't get don't get magically copied from the upstream to the fork on each update of the of the upstream. Right, so we need to add it uh, as a remote first and then pull it. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, understood. Awesome. Nice. Okay, so, and those look like, let me do the same command. Yes. Okay, good. So we're ready to take next steps. Awesome. So I'll open my VS code, right? Yes, exactly. Great. So um, this one, there is, this one is a weekly and this one is from the changelog that we have generated. So I'll have to add it again. And, uh, it's, change log. And I'm going to split it down. And this is it. So it says the date of 29. Okay, now why would it say the 29th? Today is, that's interesting, because today is June 1, right? For you, mm -hmm. in your time zone, you're, today is, Definitely. but... But you can correct it, or, or that's that's fine. That's just a proposal. So, let me look at my changelog.yaml just to see. Yeah, mine also says. Oh, okay. Mine also says the 29th, and I think oh. that's because that's probably the last mm -hmm. time there was a change merged. So, so oh. that's not not unreasonable. It's just saying the the newest commit is from the 29th. Okay, good. Oh, that's right. Okay, so I'll change it to. Six, well, uh, and, June? and it actually there, it's okay. You can just leave it as is. That file at the top is intentionally okay. read only because we don't want you to change the file at the top. We'll you'll paste oh, things into the sorry. bottom that mm. that have the changes that we want. Yes, I totally forgot about that. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's great. This is because at least for me, it, I like that the top is read only because then I know that I won't do any harm to it. Right. Understood. Now, and and you'll make my life easier and everyone else's life easier if you'll put mm -hmm. the new empty lines above that do not edit this file block. So, mm -hmm. whoops, whoops, too far. I'm sorry. Huh, right. so, line, exactly. Put it right there, uh, right. The idea is that that do not edit this file is always the bottom of this file. It's we mm -hmm. want that to always be a reminder to people, even if you have permission to write to this repository directly, do not mo modify this file, you'll break site generation. Oh, okay, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, you, you're, you're safe because you don't have write permission to the Jenkins.io repository mm -hmm. directly. Oh, okay. And let me just refer to what was done here. Version date and changes and start with everything, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's, version date changes, is that correct? The copying this part? That's right. Okay. And okay, now you that. lost a dash there on that very first line and this is YAML, mm -hmm. so every, every character matters. Mm -hmm. 
and, and right there you go indentation is that yep. indentation correct indentation matters very much and you got it exactly correct right okay awesome coming back here okay okay now Changes. could you scroll could you scroll up in that bottom window i need to see which which was the preceding version 2.294. Okay, so then that means that we've got some additional changes we need to make in your Jenkins.io file, IO repository as well. So we'll need a, before we go any further here, we need to get back onto a command line where we can do some Git updates in your Jenkins.io repository. Okay. So just go to Jenkins.io. Yes. All right, now if you do a git remote minus V. Uh, same thing. <laughs> right, so add the upstream. And in this case, it's github.com. You'll want two slashes there, Diraj. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Slash Jenkins dash infra. Slash Jenkins.io.git. Right. Very good. Enter. Mm -hmm. And now git pull minus minus all. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. And so now we've got upstream slash master. So now what we want to do is now we need to create a new changelog branch that will base, mm -hmm. be based on upstream slash master. Mm -hmm. So what branch are we on right now? Could you do a git branch command? Okay. Previous okay. Answer. So if you say here, you should be able to say git space merge space upstream slash master. And it may tell us, hey, I can't do that. You've got some changes pending in a file, but let's try it. Okay. Okay, so it says, oh, I can't do this because you've got changes pending. Let's just do a stash, so git space stash. And what mm -hmm. stash does is says, remember my local changes and save them temporarily, hide them. Okay, oh. now do a new, now do your git, git, pull, git uh, merge. Okay. Oh, merge interesting, conflict. a conflict, yeah. okay. That's okay. So here, the you you this is great. Visual Studio did a wonderful job of showing you where the conflict is. Let's go ahead and resolve that conflict. And the way you resolve it here is we want to keep the version that is on the bottom half of that and delete the top half. So so delete lines one one zero nine eight nine nine and one 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 zero zero. And then this one as well. Exactly. Now we need, and, and you want to get rid of the empty lines that were inserted there as well. You mean here? Uh, no, no, you don't want to change the indentation. The line above it needs to be deleted. There this we one. go. And the line below it. This one. Right, exactly. Now, are there any other conflicts that it's showing? Yes. Oh. Okay, so this may indicate that what we want to do then is let's stop what we're doing here and let's go resolve the conflicts a different way. So back to your command line to resolve the conflicts. Okay. Because really we don't, we don't want your copy of the branch to get out of date with what's on the master. I assume there's nothing on your changelog-2.294. Oh, whoops. Whoops, this is the wrong branch name, isn't it? Right. We need Let's, to so we need a new branch. We don't, okay, so get, mm -hmm. get space merge space minus minus abort. I should have been mm -hmm. paying more attention. Uh, abort, right? Correct. What we're going to do is tell it, hey, we don't, we don't want to do this merge at all. Okay, now oh. we're going to check out a new branch for changelog-2.296. So check out minus B. 
change log dash two dot two ninety six space upstream mm -hmm. slash master. So what that command says is create me a new branch, name it change log dash two dot two ninety six based on upstream master. Mm -hmm. And now if you look in your weekly YAML that just changed in Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, you'll mm -hmm. see that it's got a 2.295 below the place where we're at right now. Hmm, yes. Okay, so now you're up to date. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to insert the 2.296 change log in there. Awesome. So we do it first of all by let's say and paste and change the version change the date to 29 i think uh well we want it 0601 because what we're doing is now is this date in this place mm -hmm. is what day is the jenkins release generated and it will be generated mm -hmm. today this the first of june mm -hmm. okay and the, that bracketed, yeah, you want to delete that because now we're going to insert the actual changes from mm -hmm. up above in changelog.yaml. Great, awesome. So let's do that. I'm not sure if the identification is right. Yeah, usually I just go up to the top half of the editor mm -hmm. and copy the whole block. Oh, you mean oh, this one? Exactly. Right. Line five there all the way to the end. Okay. Just copy the whole thing. These comments as well, right? Everything. We want everything because then we're going to edit it. Mm -hmm. Done. So let's come back to here. Right. The first okay. One. Very good. Yes. Uh, huh, yes, it's a major bug. Okay. And so now this is where the editing part comes in, mm -hmm. where you have to you have to actually delete lines in order to to make it look the way you expect it to look. Sure. So the title here is fix request submit usage. Um, Usually what you want to do is you want to ignore ignore all of the text about the to do and the PR title and the author has provided the proposed change log. So at mm -hmm. line 11163, that's yes, the one you've highlighted, that's the one that we need. Mm, okay. Let's go through. Even you we want the regression into do this one. Uh, if it's a Yes, yes, we do. And that's when we'll have to do some research to find out what, which version I first introduced that regression. So yes, we do want that. So let's delete everything else. And, uh, and now the guidance in the style guide says, mm -hmm. says we should, we should um, start with a present tense verb usually. So usually we'd say fix regressions in, right. And, and because our readers won't probably understand the word number 5405, I would delete that and say, just fix regressions in form submissions. The, the, the human beings who are going to read this won't understand. Hmm. The numbers, yeah. Right. So do we, do we want to delete this as well? That part, I don't know yet. Let's let's look further. So now we need to decode when that regression missing submit button value in form data. So because this is focused on end users, mm -hmm. I don't know that we care about telling them about HTML unit. So maybe we should delete the missing submit button value in form data because that's users users don't care about automated tests that run with html unit hmm, okay so it's just everything no i would i would keep the double submit request because i think that one 
So, so just the phrase missing submit button value and form data, I think that should be deleted because it's talking about HTML unit. An HTML oh. unit is a Java testing tool, not a, yeah, there we go. Okay, double submit in HTML unit is again still a Java testing tool, so you can delete that as well. And then now the unwanted form validation, that one is a real user user problem. Hmm. Okay, so now how do we say this as a sentence? So fix regressions in form submissions, maybe replace the, the colon with the word from. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yes. And so, yeah, take out, exactly, I think so. And now we need to go actually into GitHub and find out where this, what version this was first introduced in. Uh, I need to get the The PR, PR number, right. We we'll either need to go to GitHub or we may also need to go to the Jenkins Jira, but one of the two we hope will tell us which version uh, no, no, actually, you are in the right place. We want oh, not okay. Jenkins.io. We need to go to Jenkins core, but mm -hmm. we want to go to the, the version you forked from. So we want to go to the upstream. So right below your username slash Jenkins, there is the, the repository. One. Exactly. We want to go there. Oh. Okay. And now look at the pull request there. Mm -hmm. And now the it's, one we uh, want is PR number, whatever the number was. Is this how you search? I Try it. Yeah, I'd, I've never tried searching by PR number. I like that. Yes, three closed. Awesome. Here you go. So we want the this top This is the one, I think. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. And let's see. Yes. Okay, so trying to understand. So now what we have to do is we have to read this and see if it will tell us where, when the regression was first introduced. Oh, 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 look, I think it may already be in the top. Very first line says, see the Jenkins bug report and the earlier pull request. So open that pull request in a new tab and let's go look at it. Oops. Oh, that's great. Same okay. tab is also fine. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay, this will now tell us which version first included this. Okay, so now click the commits tab at the top. So that one, and sometimes we get lucky if you click the individual commit, it will tell us the first version it was released in. Ah, it does. Oh, very good. I like that. So do you see the, do you see the, the series of oh. dots at the top? No, uh, up about three or four lines. Right below master, there's a Jenkins-2.295 yes. and three dots. If you expand the three dots by clicking on it, this tells mm -hmm. you which tags got the, hey, included this commit. Oh, okay. And so this says this change was included in Jenkins versions tagged 289, 290, 291, 292, et cetera. So, so that tells mm -hmm. us the first version that introduced the regression was 2.289. Okay, okay, 89. So, so back to your Visual Studio this? Code. Mm -hmm. And the regression okay. is in 2.289 instead of to do. Okay, oh, this is the reason why we searched for the version of Jenkins. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then one of the one of the rules of style here is we always end these sentences with a hard stop with a, a period. So insert the dot. Or, yeah, great. So we've mm -hmm. we've got one of them done. Mm -hmm. and, and let's keep and let's do continue. You want this on the same line? I do have preferred to, to put it on the same line. I don't know that yes. there's any mandatory. For me, it's always been easier to have it on the same line. Yeah. And there are two brackets side by side. Is that good? And and I think we should remove the first set so it would say without 
Yeah, exactly. It's fix regressions and form submissions from unwanted form validation in any browser. Yeah, that for me. Yes, this looks good. Certainly there were also automated test regressions that told us there was this problem, but, mm -hmm. but for users, the problem is about unwanted form validation. Okay. okay. All right, so we are ready to, to look at the next one. Sure, so, oh, I have it here already. So this is the second one. Exactly, right. So here to here, okay. So we are going to delete this one because we don't need it. Yes. And we will look here in the plugin manager show which plugin keep a plugin that was split from core installed okay what does that mean all right okay now i <laughs> all right now i don't okay i, I now i now we've got to, so so now we've got to think more carefully what does the okay this is saying show which plugins keep a plug I think it's okay. talking about dependencies of between the plugins. See, for me, the the I like the PR title better than the proposed change log. Mm, right. <laughs> uh, so, could you open PR fifty four seventy two and let's look at it together because I find the the thing more mm -hmm. understandable in the title than I do in the right. Okay, maybe there's some comments. So sometimes there are comments from, from, from other people saying, hey, this is not. So scroll through this a little bit. I think it may be comments from Daniel Beck that clarified that it's not really showing implied plugin dependencies. Okay, this always annoyed me. Keep going. Okay, this one. Okay. okay, there it is. This, okay, this is Daniel, all right. So for explicit dependencies is not as bad as that. But for detached plugins at every other plugin you have installed. Okay, scroll down. All right, so now Tobix says, okay, I see the problem. I'll try to limit. Okay, so show implied plugin dependencies. Quick and dirty change. All right. Okay. Keep going. Okay, so fix the wording in the message. All right, so maybe. Okay, maybe we need to look at the actual commit. So Diraj, you're, you're getting the experience here of the same thing I do. Sometimes I have to read the source code to decide what's the best way to say it. So, mm -hmm. so um, show the commits and let's see what the message is that it's going to, to give to the user. Sure. So show the second one. It says fix the wording in the message. Yeah, that one. Okay, there are still... Ah, ah, okay, got it. Mm -hmm. So, so I think what we should say is report the number of plugins with an implied dependency, right? Oh, because, yeah. because it, it, it does not show which plugins keep a plugin that was installed from, from core. What it's showing is there are a count of plugins with an implied dependency installed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, so now, speed the message so that we are going to put here. Well, well, uh, let's go back to the let's go back to the source code because I may sure. have missed something on the. So look at the preceding commit okay. in this one. This, this one. Yeah, so that one. Okay. Okay, so it says if it's not detached, return an empty set. Okay. Okay, scroll downwards. Dependence div.
Okay, go back up a little. Oh, oh, there it is. Whoops, nope, you had it. Go scroll down. Okay, here it is. Look at line 177. 177, okay. This it one. says, when the implied dependent size is less than 15, mm -hmm. then it lists each of them. But now if we scroll a little further, mm -hmm. you'll see otherwise detached many dependents. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so what this is doing is it's being smart. It says, if there are less than 15 dependents, show every one of them. If there are more, just say that there are a lot, that there are very many. Okay, oh, now okay. we have to go back to Visual Studio Code and decide how we say this. <laughs> okay. All right, so show, and, and it, that, that, that now makes more sense to me this the notion of an implied plugin dependency says the reason it's an implied dependency is because the plugin was originally inside Jenkins core and has now been split into a plugin and therefore the dependency is implied not direct so mm -hmm. so this there's the okay so now how do we, we what if we said um show Yeah, what, okay, Dirash, what if it were show, show implied plugin dependencies <laughs> or account, <laughs> or account of dependencies, well, is that right? Of account of dependencies for show implied dependencies or account of for plugins split from core. But is that really accurate? Show implied, show which plug. Okay, now thinking about it, it's show which plugins keep a plugin that was split. Okay, back to the pull request because I think I may have just said it exactly the wrong way. <laughs> Okay. okay, so and you know, now go to the back to the comment because um, back to the, the 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 conversation around this. So the okay. yes. Okay, and Toby says this plugin, it's function. Okay, previously it said you're you can't you don't disable this because others may be may rely on it. Now it mm -hmm. says this plugin is depended upon by these other plugins. Right, oh. because in this case, the TriLead API plugin, its functionality was originally inside mm -hmm. Jenkins core, but it's been separated out and therefore these mm -hmm. other plugins have a dependency on it that is implicit, not explicit. Okay, back to Visual Studio Code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think what you've put for PR title is a, is a reasonable description. Show implied plugins for plugins split from core. Awesome. Yeah, and now end it with a hard right. stop. Hmm. And we're ready to do the next one. Awesome. So this one is the next one. It's checkbox missing fill color. Yeah, and this one, I like the, the proposed change log very much. It, it, we should rather than better contrast, we may just say improve contrast. contrast for the checkbox in the learning page. Yes, that right. sounds right. So let's delete everything else. Uh -huh. so is this right? I think so, yes. Okay. Now this one says it's a long, it's a long I'm sorry, yes. 
And Daniel, when Daniel Beck writes a change log, I can almost always just take to take his text exactly as it is. So I would just Daniel is very, very good at his writing and very, very capable of writing a good change log. So he, he maintained the change log for years before I did it and he did a much better job. So Daniel's very, very good at his writing. So I would just take so, his writing exactly. So, so that's great. I hope every change log is written by Daniel. <laughs> right, exactly. Yes, okay. <laughs> now it it sure. you may need to you may need to scroll through this one because it oh. looks like he put a hard stop at the yeah, so put the hard stop there and take it out from right, exactly. Hmm. And okay. I think this looks good, right? Right. Okay, let's move to the next one then. Mm -hmm. This one is remove J tidy from core. It's about removing a dependency. Functionality including launch notification must be updated to explicitly declare a dependency on J tidy. That's a lot. Um, so what do you think? Yes, so I would, this one I think is, is well phrased, but we need to use a, mm -hmm. a specific, um, let's use a specific format earlier in the file to insert a reference to a link. So take, I think mm -hmm. we should take everything that's on line 11193. We can, Nine, we can, okay. yeah, so that the developer colon, that is intentionally there. This is this is a change that is relevant to developers and not oh. to typical end users. So what we do is we keep we delete line 89, 90, 91, and 92. Mm -hmm. hmm. And now now there's okay, it's it's making a reference, and I've preferred to do one sentence per line. So on line 89, after the first hard stop, put in a new line, right? Mm -hmm. And now there's a, this has a hyperlink in it to the NIS notification lamp, right? That's a hyperlink. There's a way to embed hyperlinks. It's using mm -hmm. a thing called a reference. So what, you'll, what you'll need to do is search backwards for a reference. Um, uh Search backward for reference. How do I do that? Yeah, so look for the word reference, references, I think it is, in this file, and we'll find an example. Here. There, there's a good example. Oops. Yes. So copy those three lines. Okay. And come back. And let's go back to that place and we'll put them in. Yeah, I, I just. Hold on the curtains. I'm not able to see my screen clearly. Yeah, I'm so like, for me, control end usually jumps to the bottom. Control end. Nice, thank you. So we will add this this one. J right. Yes. So right at right above the word messages or message. We want to insert that thing you just copied, right? Okay. okay. So now, the first on line eighty-nine, we say pull instead of issue. So, so on eighty, yeah, there it should be pull, and then the pull request is five five two one, and you'll see that on line eighty-five, right? Exactly. And then the issue is there isn't an issue, but now we're going to do a, now we need the URL syntax. And so for that, we need to find an example in this file of somebody that's using. So should I search for issue? Uh, yes. Well, actually search for what we're, what you're searching for now is, is probably URL colon. Hmm. This one. Yes, that's it. We need those two lines. Okay. Let's go back. And 
this one. Is this correct? Exactly. And now replace the URL with the, mm -hmm. the link to that NIS notification lamp. And then the words, the title should be NIS notification lamp. And we should probably call it notification lamp space plugin because people may not may think, oh, it's a physical lamp. It's not. This is a plugin that runs a lamp. <laughs> right. Okay. So and do you want to remove it from here? No. That's what I would do is I would delete that phrase. as well, I think. And I'm not sure if it makes sense. Can we insert these things? Must must be up. So if I remove the comma. Right. So does that make sense? It, it does to me. Could you scroll to the right so we can read the rest of the sentence? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, that looks reasonable to me. Awesome. So, so I think this one is also ready. I think so. Yes. Awesome. So we have, I think, last one left here. And this one, I think, is just a mistake that we need to make into a comment. So, right. so it's saying bump the spring security bomb. I think mm -hmm. we've got 5505 that we need to earn, insert. Exactly. A, a duplicate of that line. Hmm. So it is 5505, and right. it is this one. Exactly. And then we will just delete this, right? Correct. Okay. And there has to be two lines separating them, right? Or I one? think just one. At least I've only used one. Okay. Let's keep it that way then. All right. Now, if we're lucky, we should be ready to do a make run. Awesome. So let's do that. And, we do... and if you're, I think your um, Visual Studio code actually can even allow you to do the make run inside of it. I don't, I don't know how to do it. I'm not a Visual Studio code user. So using a terminal like you're doing is great. You can explore Visual Studio code later. Let's try it out. <laughs> I think. Okay. Probably... It's... Okay, let's go with the. Uh, oh, no, that was perfect. Look, the terminal prompt appeared. Don't be shy. The terminal prompt appeared. <laughs> it's a it's a great way to learn to explore something. So do a PWD there. Let's see what directory it's in. It's my home directory. Okay, so go to your Jenkins.io directory. Mm -hmm. And yes. now type make space run. And let's see if you can do it all inside your IDE. Mm, nice. Now this will take a little bit because it's going to download a Docker image for the Ruby runtime and all sorts of things mm. like that. Okay. And do we need this file or should I just close it? You, you can close it. it. You can close it. Okay. We're done. We've. We, we extracted the information we needed from it. Mm -hmm. So while I'm working on this and I have, let's say, some doubts in the PR title that I want to do. So how can I get help? Like we had some problem in the first one, I think, right? Uh, this one. So, so the main idea suggested by you is to go through the bits and try to understand right that's that's what i've had to do right and if 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 you don't know what to say say make your use what the author provided and and then hope that the mm -hmm. code reviewers will correct it because certainly mm -hmm. you and you and i are not expected to read people's minds and know what they what they should have said mm -hmm. Hmm. Right. 
So best okay. guess is so okay, is op ready. open it up and let's see how it looks. Yes, please continue. Were you saying something? Uh, no, let's look at the let's look at the site. Okay. I'm really sorry, I'm, this is a bit slow. Well, it, it's busily sharing its screen with us and we're generating a huge website, so mm -hmm. it should be slow. <laughs> okay, so now right. if you click the download button. Mm -hmm. And it change will navigate log. to change log, right? Yes. Okay, now what we see here is it's showing us 2.295 and we need it to show us 2.296. So there's a file we need to go change in the, um, in, you can use it, use Visual Studio Code to change it. Okay. Now I have to figure out where it is. I think it's in content. Content underscore TMP. Yes, okay. So in the content underscore TMP directory, you see the latest core.txt? Open that file with your editor. Okay. Done. And it Done says index. what exactly? Change it to 296. Okay. Save it. Done. And then switch to your terminal that where we were running the make. Um, control shift. Uh, let's see where and there's the, uh, there should be a, yeah we don't want a new terminal I'm not sure we want to where is where is the list of windows in studio code control shift B Oh, 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 that's good. Okay. That's the. This is for searching. I'm really sorry, I have to do this. Maybe it's under the go, go, uh, the go, uh, the go menu. Go to file, no. Is it under the run? No. So maybe in the file menu? Oh, oh, wait a sec. Oh, yes, there it is. Okay, it's on your screen. Right hand side, a little bit away from your away from your mouse. So to the far right, there's a three colon bash. If you drop that down, there will be a two colon make. Yes, interrupt this with a control C. Is this going to stop? Ah, yes. Now do run the make again. Hmm. And and I'm confident there are even better ways to do this in VS Code than what you and I are doing. I'm not a VS Code power user. Uh, I believe there's a concept of how you can in Visual, Visual Studio Code use it to actually perform a make like this. But but this oh. will this will at least be good enough. Nice. Okay. So I'll be, uh, I'll be the one that will be doing this weekly on basis, right? That that's the idea. We would love to have a rotation of multiple people doing this, but it would be mm -hmm. great if you're willing to do it. At a minimum, this is a great win that we'll have, you and I will work together so that you can submit what you've done mm -hmm. for this week. So that yours mm -hmm. will be, your, you will have written the, the change log for Jenkins 2.296 mm -hmm. that will release in about 10 hours. Very nice. So 
Actually, I would love to do all the weekly releases. If anyone else is interested, then they can contact me, or else I'll be doing all of them. <laughs> That's and and that is great. I am very very grateful for your willingness to do that. Thank you. Your the time that you're at in India is perfect because you could do it Tuesday morning your time, and mm. most of the people in Europe haven't haven't started work yet. and most of the changes that will occur in the in the weekly release are already in mm-hmm. so you've got a, a big benefit for us if you're willing to do this it's a great win definitely okay so Isn't now what you need to do so it's great excellent what you need to do is take a screenshot of this mm-hmm. what's new in 2.296 piece mm-hmm. okay. so uh, yes just uh, this area right correct that's right just the area that's about 2.296 because what we do is we like for yes and and that's the area perfect and save that because we're going to need it later 2.96 save it Okay, so now we need to now we need to create the pull request. So we want to add and then commit everything. Right. So we need to do a git add. Well, so first let's do a git diff. But yeah. Okay, so this shows 2.296. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, whoops. Okay, there's one. I would love to get rid of that trailing. You see the red block there? the red box at the top right hand corner This of the one. screen i'd like to get rid of that because it's that's a trailing blank on the end of a line oh i jumped to another one I'm sorry it was This. the thing for j tidy j further down there it is so Not line ninety three, mm-hmm. right? So save that, mm-hmm. and you notice when you did that, in the mm-hmm. window below, in the terminal below, it says change detected for file mm-hmm. such and such, and it rebuilt the site. So the nice exactly. thing about doing this inside Studio is you can change it in Studio; it will detect it and and give you a better view of the site. Wow, that's really great. And do we need to run it again? Get diff. Uh yes, it'd be good to run it again just to be sure that it it does what we it did what we expected. Hmm. Hmm. Yep. So Q to quit. Hmm. Uh could you do okay, you're you're there's a prompt showing up on the screen here which says, hints to me that you may be ending your commands with a different command than you want. Type the command jobs, J O B S. What's it? Uh huh. Yes. So what's happening is you. It appears you're pressing probably Control Z to stop things, hmm. and what that's doing is it's actually putting the job in the background rather than stopping it. Oh. So if you type the command F G, F G will bring it into the foreground again. Now press the Q key, the Q Q, the letter Q to quit. Oh. Now do jobs, J jobs and you'll see only three jobs now. Now do FG mm-hmm. again. Q. Q. Jobs, jobs now will show you only two jobs. Right. Now do mm-hmm. FG again. And Q. now do a Q. And now jobs should show only one. and so fg again hmm. right so so what you were doing is you were using a facility of the mm-hmm. of the bash shell and many linux shells have the same thing where you have the option to put something in the background in case you want to come mm-hmm. back to it later but most of us mm-hmm. just like you use our window manager to do things and keep everything in the foreground hmm makes sense yes All right, so so now we're ready to. You've done the git diff, so it's time to do the git add and the git commit. Oops. Git add. I think it's 
going to be change log. Is this correct? That's correct. So, okay, let's. Good. It says one file changed. That's the right thing. And mm -hmm. yes, some number of insertions and deletions. Great. Okay. Now, if if you're willing to do, if you have you ever used the gh command? Gh no. So try it. Type in gh mm -hmm. and just hit enter. Okay, no gh command. So so now there there you could we could go ahead and do the, and I don't know what that snap command would do. I would use a different command to install gh than the one they're recommending. Mm -hmm. But but let me suggest to you what it is, and then you can decide mm -hmm. if we should spend the time to do it. I, you and I can go through and submit this pull request uh, using just git commands and the github web pages so that's very easy to do i've mm -hmm. found that i really like the gh command because it lets me submit pull requests from my command line without having to go to the github ui oh mm -hmm. that's really nice so so maybe maybe for this time let's just do this pull request the old way and at another time we'll go through how you do use gh because mm. we're sort of running out of time so Definitely. do your git push that you were going to do sure um. so we want to say git space push space origin because we don't want to try to push to upstream now hit enter Oh, oh, you're a very patient soul. You used username <laughs> password. Okay, that's that's very good. You you get extra points for being patient. That's great. I, I tend to use private keys because I don't want to mess with that. Good. Okay, so so now it gives you the hyperlink there. Create a pull request. Mm -hmm. So all you need to do is open that hyperlink. Okay. Hmm. And this is where we'll need that screenshot that hmm. you'd created. So there it is, change log. So copy in the screenshot. Yes. So it's uh, this one. Change log to twenty nine six. Uh huh. Hmm. Yes. Oh, this look at that. Ah. That's fine. That's. I'll just. That, do you want me to do it again? Uh, I don't think you need to do it again. You are welcome to do it again, but I think it's just fine. If someone okay, complains it, about yeah. a, a box on the right hand side, they're mm -hmm. complaining about the wrong things. <laughs> okay. So sure. fix regressions in form submission. Sorry, go ahead. What was your question? No, no, I was just asking what should we do, right? Do we need to write anything, messages? I I typically don't write anything. I just submit it as is. All right, because so I just need to create... Oh, sorry, I please. think so. Just create the pull request. Okay. Let's create. And... Uh, this is it, right? That is it. Now, now you and I will be able to do this one more time. So mm -hmm. next Monday, I'll still be available. And so we've mm -hmm. got another chance to do this same exact set of steps. If you're okay mm -hmm. with this, we will do it again next next Monday. Obviously, yes. And that way, that way you're comfortable with it. The following Monday, mm -hmm. I probably won't be available because I'll still be recovering from my surgery. Mm -hmm. Okay. But next next week we'll do this together again. Definitely. I'm in. All right. Well, Diraj, thank you very much. This has been excellent. Thank you so much for your time. All and right. I'm sorry you have to deal with a beginner like me. <laughs> oh, I am delighted with your you're doing wonderful things for us. Thanks very much for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you.
My pleasure. Thank you so much. Right. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye.